So in chess, the most common type of endgame that you'll see are rook endgames. And if you think about it, it makes sense. You start the game by moving these pawns forward, you bring out your bishops, you bring out your knights, you probably trade off some of those pieces, and if your queens get traded off, in a lot of games, you end up with rooks, a couple of pawns, and your king left against your opponent's king and rook and pawns. So rook endings are roughly about 50% of all end games will be rook endings. Now the entire realm of rook endings is huge. There are tons and tons of different rook endings. You could spend hours and hours trying to learn them all. So in this video, I've handpicked what I think are the most important that every beginner and intermediate player needs to know. And I'm gonna be focusing on those. And there are some people out there that when you say rook endings, they're gonna say, But do you know the Philidor position? Do you know the Lucenant position? If not, you're just a potter. So here's the deal with Lucena and the Philidor position. I am going to cover them at the end of this video briefly, just so that you know what they are, but they're not as important as a lot of people make them out to be, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because I honestly couldn't tell you the last time I actually had a Lucena or Philidor position in a, in a game that I played. So you will see them, but not all the time. That being said, let's go ahead and jump right into some examples. Right, so before we get into the more theoretical positions and rook endings that, that people talk about, Lucena and Philidor and those type of things, I want to just start with the basic type of position that you might see in, in a normal game. Right, So here's a position, both players have six pawns, both players have one rook, but white is much, much better than black in this position. And the reason has to do with a couple of things. Number one, black has more weaknesses than white does. And the first thing is these pawns are isolated pawns. So remember, isolated pawns means a pawn that does not have a pawn on an adjacent file. So this is not an isolated pawn because there's another, another pawn on the file next to it. Same thing with these. None of these are isolated. They're all connected. And you can see how he defends him, he defends him, and same thing over here. No isolated pawns for white. Black, on the other hand, has three. And so each of these pawns is a target. They cannot defend each other, and so the only way you can defend them is how black is doing right now, by using his king and by using his rook. If the rook ever leaves, guess what? This is not going to be defended. Or if the king ever leaves, these guys aren't going to be defended. So that is why white's position is better. That's one reason. Another reason has to do with his rook is more actively placed, right? This rook is kind of all up in Black's business here, attacking this. We could even jump it up here, attack two things at the same time. And Black's rook is kind of sitting over here in the corner just defending his own pawn, right? Like if Black's rook was, you know, maybe over here where he was attacking like two things, it would be a different story, okay? So by because of those things, and then one other thing over here, Black has some doubled pawns, which again is kind of, could be a weakness, right? So those things make White's position better than Black's position. Now. That being said, I want to give you some tips. If you're playing this position as white, what should your thought process be and why? So first of all, you want to check if there are any pass pawns. Okay, pass pawns are always important in any type of endgame. Okay, in this position, there are no pass pawns. So that's something that we can just make a mental note of. So the next thing is we know that there are weaknesses, but how do we make progress, right? Because it seems like, all right, black's doing a pretty good job of defending everything. So what do we need to do if we're white to make progress? Well, the first thing that I'm going to consider as a move is rook to f4. And the reason I'm going to come over here is I'm going to try to keep finding more weaknesses until I get to a point where my opponent can't defend everything, right? So that is the goal that you're trying to achieve. And at the same time, I'm kind of being aware of, do I have any weaknesses? So this could be a weakness for me. It's the base of a pawn chain. And then maybe, you know, one of these could be weaknesses, but everything else is good, right? This is defended, this is defended, this is defended. Um, so I'm gonna keep an eye on my weaknesses while I try to create enough weaknesses that black can't handle it. So I'm going here with the idea that I wanna go down here and get on the seventh rank. Seventh rank, if there's pawns on it, is a very good spot for a rook to be. So what's black? really only one ch choice that he has is to go here. He can't let me go there or he's not going to be able to defend everything. So he plays king to e7. And now what can I do? I mean, I can go back to where I came from, but then I'm just going to be going back and forth, right? So the next step, and again, this is very important in end games, is activating your king. So our king is not in a bad spot, but how can we get it even more into the action? 
right? So maybe like heading over here and my king can put some pressure on these pawns, right? So continuing to increase the pressure. So king to d4 is a move that I'm going to look at next. And so we'll say black does something kind of natural, like check with the rook. What am I going to do with my king? I'm going to head for these targets, right? Now, I do have to be careful that I consider what's going to happen if, if black tries to invade, you know, here. Um, but because my pawns are, are connected, I can very easily kind of push them forward and it should be fine. So again, I'm going for targets, right? And so let's say black plays rook to d6 to try to, you know, prevent my king from, from coming forward anymore. Well, I can't get to that pawn, but what can I do? I can go for this pawn, right? So I go over here, attacking this one. And then maybe he puts me in check and defends his pawn, really the only way to defend it. Now I can go here and attack this one. And now he's got to deal with that. Let's say he plays rook back here. And what you'll notice is I had to do a little bit of maneuvering there, right? I had to come over here, come here, come here, come here. That happens a lot in any kind of end games, but especially rook endings. You, you'll notice that there are lots of times when you kind of have to just maneuver your king around or maneuver your rook around to eventually achieve something. In this case, eventually we, we managed to get here where we really have a lot of pressure now. So a big takeaway is be patient and be willing to maneuver your king and your rook around very carefully in end games to attack a specific target. Now, next point that I wanna make is that this move was actually a big mistake for black. And this is another important point in rook endings. Most rook endings that I see, okay, whether it's low rated, intermediate rated, even at my level at 22 to 2400 range, most rook endings are won or lost because of some little trick. There's lots of little tricks in rook endings that you have to be aware of. And here's a perfect example. By playing this move, black actually fell for a little trick. And white can play rook to f7 check. So we're skewering the rook. So if black you know, moves the king, we'll just take the rook. So he has to take our rook. And then we can take it. And what we accomplished is now we have a target here that he can't defend, right? There's no way he can defend this. He can try to move it forward, but we can just hunt it down. And if he tries to go, we're just going to capture it. And eventually, let's say he moves this, we take this, and guess what? We've got a pass pawn. He doesn't have a pass pawn. He's still working on it. And at this point, these guys are, are going. We're going to get a queen. And this, if you remember from the king and pawn ending, this should be a pretty easy win. So let me go back a few moves and do a different move for black. So, um, yeah, right here. So we advanced our king and he tried, you know, rook to d6, trying to be a little bit more defensive. What if he went on the offensive and came all the way down here, uh, you know, and tried to attack our pawn? Okay, how do, what, do, what do we do to proceed here? We could offer a trade. So maybe we move king to b5. We let him take that with the idea that we're going to take his pawn. And then we would have to, you know, evaluate if that makes sense or not. Now, one benefit for that is that we would get a pass pawn out of the deal. Right, so if I go here, he takes, we take, we get a pass pawn, and he doesn't have a pass pawn yet because we still have this guy. So I think that makes sense. But if we go back, uh, we don't really even have to give him that pawn right now. So maybe a move like rook c4 would make sense. So what we're doing is defending our um, weakness, but at the same time keeping the pressure with our king to to be ready to go and capture his weaknesses. And so maybe he comes over here and attacks this pawn. So what can we do now? Rook to c3. And so the important thing is we're positioning our pieces as best we can to, number one, defend our weaknesses, right? So you see how my rook is defending, but it's also a relatively active square that is still gonna have a threat, right? So once I move my king over, my rook is still doing, you know, you can see how my rook is doing a lot. It's much different than if this rook would, would be over here defending the pawn that way, right? It's very defensive, very passive. You wanna look for active squares to put your pieces on. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so let's say black continues his plan, right? Just keeps attacking our pawns. What are we gonna do now? Now, this is a little tricky one. You might be tempted to say, you know, G4 because then it's defended by this pawn. But the issue is, what about this guy, right? After he goes here, then we're gonna lose We're gonna lose a pawn because if we move it forward, he's, he's got it covered. So if we go back, the way that we can actually not lose a pawn is to play F4. And you see what we've done is the only pawns that we have now that are weak are this one and this one. And they are the ones that are defended by the rook. So we essentially have this fortress where every every one of our pawns is defended. And now all we have to do is sit back and just go for the targets. 
And so Black, you know, doesn't have a lot of good moves at this point. Let's say he, he abandons that and he brings his Rook over here. We can go for this pawn. So what is Black going to have to do? Put us in check to try to defend it. But now we can play Rook to C5 and block it off. And essentially, we're offering Black the option to trade because we know that if he does this, this is going to be a winning king and pawn ending for us. Now, why is this a winning king and pawn ending? Well, it's because we can very easily come over here, capture this, and we've got a pass pawn that's protected and ready to go get a queen. How is Black going to easily do that? The answer is he can't. He doesn't have any targets that are as easy as, as we do. And so we know that this is a win for us in a king and pawn ending. So by offering this trade, we're happy if he takes it. And if he doesn't, and he does something else, like let's say he comes back down here, well, we're going to take this pawn anyway. And we have essentially, through all that maneuvering, now we have won a pawn. And we are ready to start pushing it forward, using our king to help, and go on to win this game. All right, now I want to move on and look at a little bit more theoretical type of position. But we have a king and a rook. And black has this pawn here. And so black's goal is going to be to push the pawn and get a queen. And we're going to try to stop him with our rook and our king. Now, the first thing to understand is black's going to have to use these together. He can't just push the pawn by itself because we're just going to put our rook behind it and then capture it. Right? So he's got to use the king to help the pawn. And then we need to not only get our rook behind it, we also have to get our king over to help out. And so it's kind of a race to this square right here. And so one way to figure out if this is a win or a draw is to count. So if you remember from the previous video where we talked about king and pawn endings, counting, you just count up the tempo, so or the tempi. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven moves is what I'm counting. And then let's see how many white needs to stop it. One, two, three, four, five moves, and we should be able to cover that square. So by my counting, we, we should have no problem stopping this from becoming a queen. So let's see if that's true. So we put the rook behind the pawn, and black's going to try to escort it with his king. He's going to move here. We're going to bring our king closer. He's going to move his pawn. We're going to bring our king closer. He's going to move his pawn. We're going to bring our king. He's going to move it. And there we go. We got there. And if he tries to push it again, we just take it because now we have the assistance of our king. And we win the game. All right, and here's a very similar position, but you can see black's king and pawn are much further advanced. And so in this case, one, two, three, we need four moves, but black only needs one, two, three moves. And so we're not gonna make it in time, right? So we can go there, he's gonna go here, can go there, he's gonna go here, can go there, but now he gets a queen, and guess what? It's gonna be a draw, right? We just have to give up the queen, give up our rook for the queen, we get a draw. So you can see how our king was further away and so we weren't able to make it. All right, here's another example, very similar position. The difference now is that black's king is on the other side of the pawn. So before it was over here and he was kind of walking down this way, now it's on this side. And so one issue that you're gonna notice is this. So we bring our rook behind, he brings his king, bring our king, pushes the pawn, bring our king, he moves here. Look at his king and look at our king. You see the problem? We can't just go here and here to stop the pawn, right? His king is kind of shielding us off. So what do we do in this case? Well, there's a little trick, and basically it goes like this. So you bring your king down, and when he tries to push the pawn, you put him in check, okay? And you have your king covering all the squares this way, so it's forcing him off of this file, sorry, off this file. He can't go on this file, so he has to either go above his pawn we're in front of his pawn. Now, if he goes in front of his pawn, that's bad for him because now he can't move it forward, right? And so it allows you to bring your king over. And then the only thing he can do is go this way. And guess what? You can bring it behind. And now you're, you're good. If he pushes it forward, you go over and boom. When he gets a queen, you can take it, right? So let's go back. The other option that he could do was go above the pawn, right? Instead of blockading the pawn, he can go above it. But by going up there, he also lets your king, you know, come in this way. And so you just move your king. And if he tries to push the pawn, well, now you can just bring your king over and you've you've stopped it, right? Same kind of deal. He can go here, but it doesn't matter. You bring the rook behind and you get it. So the important thing to remember is when your king is, is boxed off by his king, you have to wait for the right moment. But as soon as he pushes the pawn, you bring the rook over and you force him either to go above or below the pawn. And then you, that's when your king can come in. Okay, so that's a little trick that you will have to know. All right, one final thing I wanna show you in this position, and I've intentionally put white's king very far away, but if black ever makes the mistake of separating the king from the pawn, 
So instead of pushing them together, if he makes the move like this before separating them, now white can win on the spot with the move rook to f5. And the important thing here is that he's cutting off the king. Okay, so black's king can no longer help this guy at all. There's, you can never get past this rook. And because of that, look what happens. If black decides to move this, I'm going to just wait. I'm just going to wait until he pushes it one more time. So I'm going to move my king and just start bringing my king around. Take all the time I need to. And as soon as he pushes it, bring the rook down here. Next move, I'm coming over and I'm taking the pawn. And black's king is too far away, right? He can go here. I'm going to go over. He can go here. And it's mine. So going back, you know, the only other thing that black could do in this case is like move his king over here. But I'm just going to bring my king up. And you can see that black can't do anything. If he ever pushes the pawn, I'm just going to keep waiting. And once it gets here, bring the rook down over, sorry, over and capture it. So all that to say, if you are the person with the king and the pawn in this, in this game, always keep your king with your pawn. Don't push it ahead and, and forget about the support that it needs from the king. Otherwise, if he cuts off your king, uh, there's nothing you can do. All right, now the moment that some of you have been waiting for, we're gonna finally talk about the Philidor and Lucena position. So we're gonna start with the Philidor position. Now, the Philidor position is a defensive maneuver, okay, a defensive maneuver that black can use to try to draw the game. So in this case, white has this pawn that he would like to push forward and get a queen, but black's king is blockading it, but white you know, is approaching with his king and he's got his rook in a very nice position. He's trying to win, black's trying to draw. The way that black draws this position, the Philidor position, is by bringing his rook to the sixth rank. Or if you're you know, going the other way, it's the third rank. Um, but the sixth rank in this case, blocking off white's king from moving forward. And that's important because here's why. Let's say black didn't know about this Philidor defense and he did something random like check. The problem is now white can move forward and he has cover from this pawn. So black can no longer check in because the pawn is, is shielding the king. And there, obviously you can't check him there. And because of that, now black has to deal with a checkmate threat. He's got to move his king somewhere. And white is in a much better position to win the game. Now, let's go back and say, okay, what is different about this? How does that help? Well, for one, white can no longer bring his king forward, right? So you might say, well, can't he just push the pawn? Actually, that's the only way he can make progress. If he goes check, black just moves up, check. It doesn't do anything. There's nothing else white can do. There, there are some little tricks, but for the most part, there's nothing else he can do except move the pawn forward. And as soon as that happens, okay, so you bring the rook to the sixth rank initially in Philidor. And as soon as white pushes the pawn forward, you jump all the way back. And the reason is now you are going to be able to check the king and he's not going to be able to shield himself with his pawn. Okay, you remember before he was able to hop in front of the pawn that was here and block the checks. Now, he can't get in front of the pawn. You can go check, 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 check all day long, right? And eventually, if he tries to like run away somewhere, check, you just go behind the pawn and you're going to take the pawn now. If he tries to defend it, you just bring your king up and you won the pawn. Now the game's a draw. So just to recap, in Philidor, the way that you draw is by bringing your rook to the sixth rank, forcing the pawn to move forward, and then going back to the back and just check, 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 and eventually you can take the pawn if he ever leaves it. And if not, you just keep checking him until uh, it's a draw. And I know some of you probably want to see it from black's perspective. So if you're playing black, you know, you're trying to defend against your opponent who's pushing this pawn forward, you're in this position, what's the move that you should play? That's correct. Rook to a6. Remember, the sixth rank stopping the king from moving forward. Eventually, they will give up and have to do this. And then you go all the way back with the idea that you're just going to check, 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 check. And eventually, if they leave the pawn, you just put your rook behind it and take it. All right, so let's move on. And I'm going to change a few things about the position. All right, so here's another position where, again, white is trying to get a queen. But you'll notice a very big difference. Instead of black's king being in front of the pawn and blockading it nicely, his king is now cut off by white's rook. Okay, so it's a very big plus for white. 
And on top of that, White also has the fact that his king is shielded nicely from the uh, from the rook by the pawn. So black's not able to check him because the pawn is providing cover. However, that being said, what you will notice is that if white tries to move his king, like let's say here, so that he can get a queen, what do you think black is going to do? Yeah, he's going to check him. And then if you go over here, he's going to check him. And then if you go back here, he's going to check him. You still have an issue here where every time you try to move, black's putting you in check, right? You can go here, check. Go here, check. And if you go back in front of the pawn, black's like, I don't care, I'll just waste a move until you do something useful. So white still has a problem. And this is the Lucena position. But in the Lucena position, there is actually a technique that you can use to win as white. So remember, Philidor was a draw if black knew how to defend properly. Lucena is a win if you know what to do. And the secret move and the trick that you have to remember is what's called, they call it building a bridge. But essentially it is, you're gonna use your rook at the right moment to shield your king from checks with your from checks from the opponent's rook. And the way you do that is by moving your rook to the fourth rank. Okay? The fourth rank. Now you might say, what what does the fourth rank have to do with anything? You're gonna see very soon. So remember, black is just kind of hanging out, right? He's just waiting for you to do something useful. So let's say he goes here and you try to bring your king around, what's he gonna do? He's gonna put you in check. And if you go here, what's he gonna do? He's gonna put you in check. And then if you go here, what's he gonna do? He's gonna put you in check. And now you can make this move right here, boom. And it looks like, oh, well, he's still gonna keep putting you in check. But here is where this move comes into play. The, the fact that your rook is now on this fourth rank means you can block the check. And guess what? What's he gonna do? How's he gonna stop you from getting a queen? He can't. He can take your rook, but you just take it, and then you get a queen next move. He could go somewhere else, but you just get a queen. There, there's no other checks, right? So you built a shield with your rook on the fourth rank, and eventually you blocked him off. And this is actually a very common technique in rook endings, that if your king is being checked over and over and over by your opponent's rook, you want to look to set up a position where you can shield it with your own rook. Okay, and so even if it's not the Lucena position, this can come in handy in rook in rook games. If you're ahead and you have some extra pawns, but your opponent keeps putting you in check and putting you in check and putting you in check, look to make a shield with your rook at the right moment. All right, so that's the Lucena position. Now you know Philidor, you know Lucena. So next time somebody says to you, Do you know the Lucena position? Do you know the Philidor position? You say, yeah, actually I do. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this video. There is a ton more to learn about Rook Ending, so don't think that I have covered it all, not by any stretch of the imagination, but this should hopefully be a good starting point for beginners and intermediate players. If you learn these concepts, I think you'll be well on your way to winning more of your Rook Endings. Let me know if you have questions or if there's something you want a little more detail on. But as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.